We saw a fair bit of this deck yesterday, Andrew, and, you know, with the snowball... You know, I'm wondering at some point if they throw the first Hog Rider from the middle to get at that bomb tower, and then second behind, and maybe try to get, oh. create some geometry on the left-hand side, and that is quite a bit of damage on the right. Yeah, they're actually able to sneak that Hog Rider in. Sam and Morton's pressure is starting to become a lot. My S-King is so frustrating to play against. They're a team that never gets caught in a bad rhythm. If they see something that's not working, they change it up, they improvise, they evolve, and they make it so that your opponent, or their opponents here in this case, Pain Gaming, their offense died right in its tracks for the last half of that game, it felt like. Look at that, Sam and Morton squeezing by with some incredible, incredible defense. Let's see if Pain Gaming can hold on and send us to number three. Goblins to the oh. outside, log out of cycle. Goblins high inside, and they do get a couple of stabs. Timing off by just a half second there, but still beautiful execution by Sam and Morton. 385 in, snowball in, poison on. Everything ticking in, Miner still there. Pains, Wallace, and Lucas evening things up. And a lot of fireball value right there in the middle. The freeze comes in, Ooh. and the hunter or the musketeer is distracted by the giant skeleton, and that's a huge hit. 737, and now it's SK with the lead. Yeah, I couldn't remember in game number one if we actually ever saw the freeze come out. I know I did see it in the hand when we were looking at the stats after the game. So you see there, Sam, I believe, pulling the trigger on the freeze, doing a really, really nice job. Heal Spirit comes in, allows that Hog Rider to get another hit. Not quite as much as they would have loved to see out of it, but a very, very nice hit nonetheless. Look at that, that's gonna do it. Oh, huge sequence there at the end. You know, we talk about him a fair bit, but he's one of those guys who isn't really known as a ladder player, but you put him in a set where he, in a full length set as opposed to just a best of one, and he's real nasty. Yeah, and you see that snowball coming in, Javi throwing out the oops, thinking his Electro Wizard was gonna stay alive. That would have put it back in attack range. So an early mistake here from the SK Gaming representative, and Vitor gonna take advantage of it as best he can here. About 12 Elixir coming across the bridge. Yeah, this is gonna be a pretty nasty turn here. Ooh, he misses the pushback. And that cage, yeah, not gonna do it. And that's gonna be game number one. You see Javi kind of scratching his head going, oops, uh-oh. And that's going to be a tower down yeah. and a very, very difficult come from behind here for Javi, especially playing great. Yeah, I mean, Javi looked like he got hit in the face by his own misplay. Yeah, pretty, pretty huge win in game one. And not just big for Pan Gaming, but big for Vitor, who's had a lot of moments where oh, if man. this Royal Ghost can get moving a bit faster. No, sir. Lightning does not get the Electro Dragon off, and Vitor is going to take a two-game sweep. That cannon cart was yeah. really, really good for Sam. Really excellent, and now putting a bit of pressure on the right-hand side. Mortar will pull the balloon, but t take a look at how much Sam has on the board right now. Yeah, he's got that, the Hunter and the Royal Creek working down that left-hand side. Great arrows come in. A better skeleton barrel to keep that Baby Dragon right there locked in the middle, but Sam has started to turn things his way. Baby Dragon to get on tower after the balloon drop and death damage. Baby Dragon behind, gonna clean that up. And then the freeze again. Sam playing so patient as always. And that that Mega Knight super taken oh. for the graveyard. The skeletons. Oh. oh, not gonna get the King Tower activation for Wallace. So another missed King Tower opportunity. Yeah, but now you see the Mega Knight going all the way into the Bomb Tower, so tanking both the King Tower and yeah. Princess Tower. Gonna get a swipe on that left-hand side. That's a GG. That's a well-played. Sam, <clears throat> we saw a fair bit of this deck yesterday, Andrew, and, you know, with the snowball use, we saw it, we saw it used both effectively and ineffectively, and the big difference was whether or not you had another troop to pick up the attention of the Hunter or the Ewis when you did get that snowball in. So we'll see if Morton can find ways to get that second level of distraction as he goes for those big time balloon pushes. Yeah, and Morton looking like he was getting a little overwhelmed. They're able to defend, but an RG is on the board and they have even Elixir. So Lucas up about yeah. six right now. As we go into the final 35 seconds, it has been all Lucas on offense. Yeah, I mean, Morton going just for straight minor chip damage to win this game is going to be really tough when you're talking about playing against the win condition of World Giant. You talk about World Giant getting the triple elixir with lightning. Really, really difficult. So now the balloon finally coming down again for Morton. It's almost like he forgot he had it. And it's cruising right on through. What a gorgeous, oh. gorgeous play out of Morton. Oh, the lightning trying goodness. to finish things off. 
That's not gonna do it. Morton <laughs> comes from behind, and that sequence at the end, and look at this, just stacking giant skeletons in the cycle there right now is. is Morton. The balloon does finally come down, but this mortar does get controlled by the skeletons in the middle. Balloon still currently holding on to life for a little bit, but those firecrackers getting it down. Yeah. NATO will pull it back. This is going to be a tough one here. Lucas in a good spot. Death damage going down. Mortar still up high. Fisherman there with bats to try to take it down, but you got a lot of units already focusing on the balloon. Bats are there. Not going to be enough. Lucas playing brilliant, brilliant control, just getting a little bit of chip when and where he could with the logs and the earthquake, so that's got to be a frustrating loss for Morton, just feeling like he just running his head into the wall over and over and over again. Going to be right back around to that hog rider. There he is. Fisherman going to come down. Yep, there's the fisherman going to pull away. Brilliant sequence of defense from Morton. And now Lucas has to be panicking just a bit. Man, this is a real back and forth now. 24 HP separating these two. Lucas with the advantage. Graveyard poison in one more time. And a pretty heavy spend right into the poison. King Tower activation does come in now. And this could be a significant factor here in the final 30. Graveyard into the right hand side, Hog Rider into the left. Does Morton have a way to stop the Hog Rider? One shot's gonna get in from the Hog on the left hand side. Can it get a second one? EQ in, Graveyard on the opposite side. 326, and 326 303. to 320, 303. Can a spell get in for oh. Lucas? It will not. Morton holds on for the win. SK Gaming is going to the Western Championship. SK Gaming going to finals. I don't know if anyone doubted it for a moment, a moment but pain. Gaming, what a beautiful, phenomenal run for them here in the West. And I am so very happy that we are not done seeing them yet here this year in CRL.